Hello, welcome back. Let's take a look at our pi dict def solution. The function that we are to write that's new is list definitions. And here you see that I have done two list definitions. But by now, maybe that doesn't bother you too much because you realize that this list definitions was collected by the interpreter and the identifier put on. And then this one was collected by the interpreter and the identifier was moved to it. So this one is no longer in memory. However, I've tested them all so that we have various ways of doing that. But first, maybe we should look at the line 7, where I do just what I said not to do. I import everything from PyDictDef. Now then, even though I want to run those functions that were there, most of them, I don't want to run the main that was there. Let's go down and see. I don't want to run that main. I want to run this main. It's exactly the same. But if I was not to put this in, and I called main, it would run that one. And then it would run the run menu over there. And because I want it to come back here to run run menu, I had to introduce another main. So that from importing needs a lot of thought every time. You'll see that here in my run menu, I have list definitions, and that is my new function. And if they hit a D or definitions, something like that, then that's what gets called. Everything else is the same. We just added a new key value pair to our choices. Well, let's look at these list definitions. Here's a very straightforward way where I start with an empty list, and now I'm asking for the PyDict items. Those are key value pairs, but as tuples. So that returns tuple after tuple of key value. I put them in a new list, value key, because I want to sort by value. And that's what happened right here. That is what tuples sort as the first one, and then the second one if there's a tie. So now they're sorted the way I want them, and I'm going through those definitions, defs, and I'm printing out the result. That is a good way, straightforward, easy to understand. I could have replaced these three lines, you realize, with this list comprehension. Here I'm for looping through my items, which gives me a tuple each time of key value. And then I'm sticking them in my new list as value keys. So these three are the same as that. Another way, using the key option of a sort. Here I'm making value key as a nested function inside that function. That means that within that function can be seen any of the identifiers that are alive when it's called like PyDict. Also, this function can only be seen inside the list definitions function while it's running. It won't show up in a help if this is imported, which is good. Okay, now I'm going to sort them. This time I'm going to specify a key, a value key. That means they're going to get sorted by the return values, which are the values, and that works like a charm. But you want to remember that the each that comes out is an original key, but sorted by value. So I'm printing out the value and then the key. There is one other variation that I didn't put here, and that would be to use the lambda. That would happen here. Key equals lambda. And then I'd say when a key comes in, what goes out is the value. So there's another variation. All good. OK, that's that one. Now we remember our functions move and use. This time, we have a dictionary. We're going to move a dict. And we see that this label is on our dictionary. 
And then we move it over to anything and nothing happened. We still have our local identifier on the very same dictionary. When we do use, then this label is on the dictionary. And when I say label of one equals a smiley, well, then that comes right on into that dictionary. No problem at all. That points out two things. One is that the string is good for a key, as you know, but that the string one is different from the integer one, and the integer is also good for a key. Okay. I'll see you in the next lab.